The One and Roy Adventures of Thomas the Tank Engine, Episode 53, The Untold Story of Timothy. One evening, Splatter and Dodge were delivering some cargo to the docks. The two diesels rolled into the docks where Cranky, Salty, and Porter were telling stories. Hey everyone, it's Dodge. How are you all spending this evening? You're telling stories? Salty nodded. That's cool, to Dodge. Would you mind if me and Splatter told a couple of stories? Oh no, said Porter. The last time you two told a story, I got scared half to death and ran into a set of buffers. What story was? Oh, that one we told last Halloween. Yeah, about the trucks from the Black Lagoon. Yeah, that was a good one. But we're not talking about that story today. This story we're going to tell is called The Untold Story of Timothy, the Number Zero. A long time ago, on a railway known as the Southeastern Railway, there were seven steam engines running it. Among these seven engines was a white tank engine named Timothy, who had the number zero on his side tanks. Because Timothy was the number zero, his popularity rate was pretty much zero, and the other engines liked to play tricks on him all the time. At the time, a bridge was being built that went over a large ravine. It hadn't been finished yet, and the engine saw this as a chance to play a trick on Timothy. One night, the engines told Timothy that the bridge had been finished, and that he was to be the first engine to cross it. And before anyone knew it, Timothy was puffing across the bridge. He was never found again. You mean he fell off the unfinished bridge, said Cranky? Yes he did, said Splatter. What happened to the other engines? asked Porter. Well, said Dodge, as you can imagine, the controller was not thrilled that they were responsible for the loss of an engine, so they were all sent for scrap. Rumor has it though, said Splatter, that Timothy's ghost can be seen on different railways. What he does is that he looks for anyone who takes the name of Timothy in vain. A perfect example would be Bill and Ben, said Dodge. The way they always play tricks on our Timothy, so Timothy the ghost engine would come looking for them, and he would take them away. And well, what he would plan to do with them, we don't know. Another example would be anyone who refuses to believe the untold story of Timothy, said Splatter. Oh, now you're just making stuff up, said Salty. That story is a bunch of hippie, dippy baloney. Splatter and Dodge ignored the rude comment, and they left the docks. The news of Splatter and Dodge's story soon spread around the island quickly. Just like Salty and Porter, the engines that heard about the story thought it was just a bunch of made up stuff. Night soon came, and Cranky, Porter, and Salty went to sleep. Just then, Porter heard the noise of a steam engine coming closer and closer. Hey, uh, Salty, are we expecting any more deliveries? Uh, not really. Why do you ask? At Navford Station, Bill and Ben were chatting. Did you hear about Splatter and Dodge's story about Timothy the Ghost Engine? said Ben. Oh yes I did, said Bill. You know, I'd like to see if we could play a trick on Timothy and make him go off an unfinished bridge. Hey, what the? Splatter and Dodge were at Nafford when Thomas puffed up. Hey Splatter, hey Dodge, what's going on here? 
Well, nothing much, it's bladder. Just then, a black tenor engine pumped past with Ryan in tow. What are you doing with me? I demand an explanation. Who is that pulling Ryan? asked Thomas. It looked like James, only he was black, said Splatter. But I passed James on my way over here, said Thomas. Hmm. Oh dear, said Splatter. Thomas is going, hmm. That must mean he wants to follow that engine. Correct the mundo, said Thomas. Now come on, let's see where he's taking Ryan. Thomas popped away and Splatter and Dodge fall behind him. Thomas, Splatter, and Dodge followed Ryan and the black engine down the line towards an old junction. They stopped just before the bend and peeked out behind the corner. They saw the black engine pushing Ryan into a signing. As soon as the engine had left, Thomas, Bladder, and Dodge pulled into the area. They were shocked at the number of engines that laid in front of them. Thomas, said Ryan, what are you doing here? Splatter, Dodge, and I saw you being pulled away, Ryan, and we came to see what was going on. What are you all doing here? Well, said Salty, there'd be this ghost engine named Timothy roaming around who's been capturing some of us. A lot of us are pretty much engines who have refused to believe in the untold story of Timothy. The untold story of Timothy? What's that? asked Thomas. Yeah, it's a story we told Salty and Porter, said Splatter. So this Timothy has been capturing engines and freight cars that don't believe in his story. Also anyone who mistreats anyone else named Timothy, said Bill. Me and Ben would be a perfect example. He hasn't been doing it alone, said Hero. He has a little gang with him. Just then, Timothy pulled up. Hey, what are you doing here? He said. Engines, get them! And Timothy stands him racing down the line. Splatter and Dodge tried to race away, but the two yellow engines hit Splatter and knocked him off the track. Thomas bumped the two yellow engines back down the line and pushed Dodge away. Don't worry Splatter, we'll come back for you, said Dodge, and the two raced away down the track. Splatter could only watch as Timothy and two of the other engines chased after Thompson Dodge. Thompson Dodge rocketed down the line. Timothy and the other engines chased after them. Thompson Dodge raced through the sheds and stopped by the turntable where Splinter and Stanley were resting. Turn the turntable, said Thomas. The turntable quickly turned. Timothy quickly came to a stop. He hissed loudly and raced away. Who was that? asked Splinter. That was Timothy the Ghost Engine, said Dodge. Who? asked Stanley. It's kind of a long story, said Dodge. Thompson and Dodge explained the situation to Splinter and Stanley. So this Timothy is capturing engines and freight cars that don't believe in him? Huh, that's kind of cool. He's kind of like the boogeyman or something. No, it is not cool. It's anything but cool, said Dodge. Don't worry, said Splinter. We'll help you get those engines and freight cars out of there. Oh, thank you, said Thomas. We better go now while we have the chance. The engine soon pulled up to the old junction. Hang on, said Dodge. Do we even know what we're going to do? We need a game plan or something. Well, said Splinter, Timothy is probably going to have some of his henchmen guarding the engines, so we need an engine to act as life bait. Back at the signings, Timothy himself was guarding the engines and freight cars. Why are you doing this? What are you planning to do with us? asked Splatter. <laughs> we 
Well, since you all have decided not to believe in me, you're all going to meet the same fate as the engines from my old railway. You mean you're going to scrap us? said Henry. Oh yes, said Timothy. And then just like the engines that mistreated me on my old railway, you're all going to become ghosts just like them and me. And then you'll all serve as my slaves. Just then, Thomas came out from behind the corner. Hey, Red Eyes, bet you can't catch me, he said, and he raced away backwards. You won't get away from me this time, said Timothy, and he chased after Thomas. Timothy chased Thomas down the line. He didn't see Dodge, Splinter, and Stanley waiting on the adjacent line. Alright, the coast is clear, said Splinter. Let's go. Dodge led the rescue party down the track. Followed by Splinter. And then Stanley. They pulled into the yard. Dodge, you're here, says Bladder happily. And so are Splinter and Stanley, said Dodge. Now let's get you all out of here before Timothy or some of his other henchmen show up. Dodge turned around and coupled up to Splatter and the rest and the trucks and trucks. Splinter coupled up to Ryan and Hero, and Stanley coupled up to Bill Ben and Henry. We'll have to come back for you guys, said Stanley to Spank and Salty and Porter. Dodge tried to pull away, but he accidentally ran over first, and the Chopsum trucks pushed against the buffers and they broke, creating a loud noise. We're toast. French toast. No, toast with butter. No, toast with jam. Meanwhile, Thomas was still trying to outrun Timothy. Then, unknown to Thomas, the gates mysteriously closed by themselves, and the signal went red. Thomas couldn't stop and he crashed into the gates and derailed. Ha! Got you now, Thomas, said Timothy. Just then, Wally came racing around the corner. He hit the gates and flew off the tracks and hit Timothy, and his load spilled all over him. Yeah, ah, uh, ah. Uh. uh, what just happened? asked Spankan. Wowie, said Thomas, where did you come from? Just then, Timothy, the oil burning engine, pulled up. Timothy, said Thomas, did you push Wally into the crossing? Yes, I did, said Timothy. I was at Nafford Station earlier, and I overheard you and Dodge talking about this Timothy the Ghost train, so I knew I had to help somehow. What was Wally carrying that made Timothy disappear like that? Salt, said Wally. I heard somewhere that salt is one of a ghost's weaknesses. Ah, interesting, said Thomas. Well, thanks a lot, guys. Can you get me back on the tracks? It took a while for the mess to get cleaned up, but soon Thomas, Wally, and Timothy were on their way to meet their friends. The engines were all waiting at the switch. Is everyone present and accounted for, said Thomas? Everyone's here, said Splinter. Did you get away from Timothy? Yes, he's gone now, said Thomas. All thanks to Wally and our Timothy. And the engines all let out a sigh of relief.